I'm Rahil from ExplainX. Today, as a part of ExplainX platform deep dive, we will go through this sample notebook and use the ExplainX package to explain the predictions of a CAD boost binary classification model that has been trained on top of FICO credit lending dataset. So to get started, and this notebook will be available on GitHub for, you, for the viewers to try it out on their own local computer as well. So let's get started. First, I will install the ExplainX package in my local computer in order to access ExplainX. I won't be running this line since I already have ExplainX installed. After installing, I will go through my model development phase. I will import all the relevant packages and I will get the data set which is directly available from within my ExplainX package. As I mentioned before, it is a credit lending data set released under license by FICO. It will be used for binary classification of labels, credit extended, represented by zero, versus credit not extended, represented by one. So I load this data set and I split it into test and training data set. And after that, I train a CAD boost classifier that is basically predicting whether someone will be extended a credit line or not. After I fit the model, that is where explainability and interpretability come into the scenario. So let's look at the explainx function. Explainx for tabular data is accessed through the single line of code. What you need to pass is your test data sets, your model, and the name of your model. Explainx will take all these parameters and will then automatically run explainability techniques to return a link to the dashboard that you can access within your Jupyter Notebook or in a new tab with the explanations. So let's click on this link to open up our dashboard and explain the model. So here is what the dashboard looks like. Uh, before we dive in, here are two quick tabs you should know about. The first is the Analyze Using SQL. Um, this is useful for people who love SQL and have expertise in the language. By using this, you can actually slice and dice your data by using SQL queries and evaluate model performance by execute, executing various queries, no matter how complicated they are. The second tab is View Your Data tab, which allows you to look at your data in a tabular format. Very basic but important features. So let's dive right into the main explanation levels. So the first is the global explanation level. I will click on this and it will take a little bit of time collecting feature importance values and will display the graph once it's done. So by looking at the graph, uh, we can understand how our model actually made its prediction. For instance, I can see here the features are ranked by their importance, calculated by utilizing the SHAP explainer. In summary, simply by reading this graph, we can see that on a global level, model considered external risk estimate, months since most recent, most recent inquiry, and net fraction revolving burden to be the top three impacting variables towards the model. Adding another step into the analysis, it is clear that looking at aggregate importance might not be enough. We have to identify on a global level which features had a positive or a negative impact on the model output. Scrolling down, we can actually see how our model importance is divided into different classes. So for class is equals to one, where we did not extend uh, cred the credit line, external risk estimate, net fraction revolving burden, and months since most rec recent inquiries are the top three important features. For class is equals to zero, where we did extend our credit line, external risk estimate actually had a negative impact on the overall model output. And net fraction revolving burden was the second most important variable, and percent trade never delinquency was the third. So now you're able to understand how your model actually thinks about feature importance when it comes to different classes within your data set. Now, the next step that we have to understand is uh, the local explanation. In the local explanation, I can actually pass any sort of data set to see for that particular person what are the features and how each feature actually contributed to the output of the model. 
Here we can actually see that experience summarizes the insights for you. For example, for this particular person, the predicted, uh, predicted outcome was that the credit line should not be extended. And the model is about 52% confident. The model was confident because it thought that the three most important variables influencing the model's prediction were average minimum file, which had an impact of 31.9%, person trades with balance, which had an impact of 20%, and external risk estimate, which had uh, uh, an impact of 20.7%. We can also see that the there are there are variables that had a negative impact. So for example, percent trade never delinquency had a negative 40%, almost 40%. Month since most recent, recent inquiry had a negative 29.79%. Uh, and the percent install trades had a negative 17.33%, after which the model actually predicted one and here are uh, the actual values that are presented in a form. And this is actually a what if analysis form that will allow us to perturb the data points and measure the change in model predictions. For example, if I change the value of external risk estimate from 73 to 40, I can clearly see whether or not my model prediction actually changes and it actually does. So now we have a predictive outcome that all right, so keeping everything constant, if we change the value of external risk estimate from 73 to 40, the model will actually predict that you should extend the credit line to this particular customer and the model is 63% confident. And you can actually read the insights and you can understand um, how the model actually made its decision. And I can actually gain a lot of understanding into my model's behavior just by doing these perturbations, by seeing whether my model is making sense and is making decisions on factors that align with the domain knowledge or the business, business logic. You can even further explore and debug your model by looking at the distributions. We won't dive in much deeper into this since this is pretty generic and this is pretty much uh, intuitive and a lot of people are already familiar on how to understand uh, data distributions. The other thing I can actually look at is feature influence on the model prediction while keeping all the other variables constant. And we do that by plotting a partial dependence plot that actually creates, uh, that actually helps us understand how marginal changes in the features value will affect the overall outcome of the model. Here I can choose the probability of predicting uh, class one, which is credit line not extended. And here I can look into my external risk estimate. Once I do that, I can actually see a clear pattern, which is pretty interesting, that as we keep on increasing the value of external risk estimate, our probability of predicting credit line not extended will increase. So we can understand that external risk estimate, uh, the higher value of external risk estimate means that it's riskier to extend the credit line to a specific uh, specific customer. And this is the, this is a clear model logic, and this is and you can actually confirm this by talking to your business stakeholders and see how things are working. Last but not least is the cohort analysis. We really want to understand how our model is actually behaving when uh, we have different cohorts within our data set. So in this example, I've already chosen two, dif two different cohorts within my data set. So I have all my data that shows a pretty nice distribution and has an accuracy of 72%. At the same time, I also want to understand how my model is performing when the external risk estimate was greater than 50 and when it was less than 50. I can clearly see when my external risk estimate was greater than 50, the accuracy was 73%. But when the external risk estimate was less than 50, I only had 190 data points and my model was less accurate in these instances. So now as a model builder, I can actually go back and I can actually look at why my model is actually behaving less accurately when the external risk estimate value is less than 50. My first assumption from looking at this might be that due to less data points, the model is unable to capture the information that it should. 
So as a debugging mechanism, I can actually go back, either add more values, add more data points, or do some other sort of analysis to fix this problem so my model is not really biased towards people with external risk estimate less than 50. So I'm very proud uh, to announce that we have added more support for black box models. And now with these four steps, you are able to better understand how your model is basically performed. You can even share this with other stakeholders and have a very easy and a fast way of accessing explanations of your machine learning model with writing the minimum amount of code and custom without customizing these techniques for different frameworks because we have already done that uh, for you. I hope you liked today's deep dive session. To try it out, please head on to explainx.ai and register a free account to access the API to get uh, to start explaining your own models. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.